Let's make the bass from Cyberpunk 2077. We finally got to 200 presets in my preset pack called Sounds You Know. It's 200 useful presets from all genres of music, and a link for that's in the description. Keep an eye out for a new preset pack called Ear Candy coming out next week. Now before I jump into a step-by-step -step tutorial, I want to give a little bit of an overview of this preset and talk about what our goal is here. Now in this preset, we're running a saw wave through a bandpass filter before some distortion. Now the reason for the bandpass filter is because distortion is going to add harmonics to the loudest frequencies first. Those are going to get the most harmonics. Now most of the time the loudest frequency is your fundamental but that already has harmonics. Um, so we're going to get some interesting sounds by boosting some of these higher frequencies and cutting out some of the lower frequencies before the distortion. Now before the distortion I'm also adding in a chorus and this is going to make the frequencies in the harmonic series kind of dance around a little bit. They're going to get louder and they're going to get softer. And that movement is going to really highlight the effect of this distortion, right? Because like I was saying earlier, if the signal is louder, it's going to get more distortion. It's the same as turning up the drive here. So that's going to add a lot of life to the sound uh, having this movement here. Then after the distortion, I'm just compressing it a little bit to try to catch uh, some, of the, um, some of the loud notes that might be popping out from this chorus here. And then I'm just coloring the sound a little bit by cutting out some of the lows here and here because we're going to be adding in a sub later. Then I'm adding in a reverb and then the sub is from oscillators 2 and 3 and we'll talk more about that later. To get started, initialize preset. For this one, we're going to be using the classic blend wavetable, which goes from triangle to saw wave, square wave, and then pulse width modulation. So for this one, we're just going to be using the saw wave, but I wanted to have some options. The saw wave is at frame 96. Then I'm going to lower phase randomization and then lower the pitch to negative 24 semitones. Now I'm going to add in a filter. So filter one is going to be an analog 24 decibel filter. I'm going to switch the blend over here to 1, so that's a bandpass filter, and then lower the resonance to 10. Then for the drive, let's go with about 13.5, and that's going to add a little bit of distortion to our sound. So now that I have that bandpass filter, let's go over to the effects, uh, and let's add a distortion. But before we do that, let's get some movement with a chorus. So now that if I add the distortion, if I set this to hard clip, I'll get some higher harmonics. And I'm going to control the drive here with macro 1. Let's lower the volume to demo. Now hear the difference that the chorus makes. So that chorus really accentuates the effect that that distortion is having because certain frequencies are getting louder and quieter. And as they get louder, harmonics are added to those frequencies. So anyways, it's a little bit thick for my taste. I'm going to lower it to eight voices and then lower the mix to about 40%. And then I'm going to lower voices to one, just so I'm not putting two notes through the hard clipper here. Uh, for macro one, I'm going to label this drive, and I'm going to set this to 0 0.65. Now that I've done that, I'm going to add in a compressor. That's going to come after the distortion, and this is just going to catch some peaks. It's going to be a single band uh, compressor. I'm going to double click this because I just want downwards compression. And so I'm going to raise the threshold up here to about negative two or negative three. Um, and if you want, you can also make it a little bit more of a limiter and just drag down on this a little bit so that the ratio is higher. So that's just going to uh, decrease the volume even more once it hits that threshold. Oof, now we're peaking.
Now that we've done that, let's add in a filter here. This is going to be a notch filter, digital notch blend. And then let's slide over the blend to one, so that's a notch. And then let's set the resonance to 95. So we're not just cutting out one frequency, but we're mostly cutting out one frequency. That frequency is going to be negative 24 semitones, which is our fundamental, uh, as long as we turn up key tracking 100%. So now that we've done that, let's add in an EQ. That's going to be after the uh, filter as well. And then for this one, we're doing quite a bit. We're going to cut out the lows here. I'm going to set the cutoff for this thing to 30. And then the resonance will be 6. Then I'm going to use this uh, band here. This is going to be negative 7. So we're cutting out quite a bit here. The cutoff for this one is uh, 72, and then the resonance is zero, so it's a pretty wide cut there. Then for this top thing here, this is going to be our little high shelf uh, resonance all the way down, and then for cutoff on this one, uh, let's set that to 93. And then uh, for gain, it's going to be 2.5. So we're getting pretty close. Now we're going to add in a reverb, and I couldn't really make out the reverb in the track because you don't hear um, any silence after the instrument. Um, so I just kind of followed my instinct here. Uh, I just cut out anything below 40 for the low here. A little bit higher, I set it to 50. And then gain down to zero. I brought back in a little highs. Um, there's not a ton in the sound, so I feel safe raising that a little bit. Um, size, I kept that where it is. Time, let's go two seconds. You don't want it too long or it gets really muddy. And then for the same reason, we also don't want too much in our mix. So I set that down to 20%. Now, I also turned down the spread because we're getting a lot of width from this chorus here. Uh, so you may want to use a reverb, an external reverb. I actually wasn't using one for the demo because I don't think uh, it mattered that much for like a bass sound like this. But, you know, if you were putting this in a production, I'd probably take out the reverb from this preset and add in a reverb in post so that it's fully stereo. Because we're going to turn this down quite a bit to about 30. So now that we've done that, I'm going to control the um, cutoff of this band pass here. I'm going to hold shift, drag that over, and I'm going to set this to 0.45, so a little bit lower than we were at before, and I'm going to cut, uh, call this BP cutoff for band pass cutoff. And I'm also going to control this dip here because uh, part of the reason I have that dip there, um, we're boosting this frequency here so that we get the harmonics from the distortion. But we don't necessarily want these frequencies to be all that loud. We just want their harmonics. So now that we're done with those frequencies, we got their harmonics, we're cutting them out after the distortion. Um, and so I'm gonna have that follow the bandpass filter cutoff here. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag this over. Well, first I need to click on it so that I'm controlling this cutoff. Hold shift and drag that over to the cutoff. And then I'm going to set this to the same amount as that one. So 104. So now that I'm doing that, I'm also going to add in a pluck. So not only is it going to be a pluck um, as far as the amplitude goes, I'm also going to use a pluck for the filter. So for the amplitude envelope, I'm setting this down to 0.5. And then for this envelope, I'm going to use this to control the filter cutoff. So I'm going to drag sustain all the way down, pull on this point to make it a little steeper, drag that over to the cutoff. And then I'm going to lower this to about 48, so four octaves. Then I'm going to control that with macro three. So I'm going to label macro three pluck. 
And then uh, 48 is quite a bit. I only really want one octave, so that's a quarter of that, 0 0.25. So now we get that bow bow, you know, kind of plucky, classic cyberpunk type sound. Um, and now I want to add in some subs. So for the subs, I'm gonna use the classic blend here. And um, this has to be set direct out because uh, I don't want it to be going through any of the distortion or anything. I want this to, to be pretty much just my low frequencies. Uh, and I also want this to have, I want it to kind of sound like it was going through the distortion. Um, so I'm giving it a little bit more odd ordered harmonics. So something closer to a square wave. Um, and so for this one, for oscillator two, I set the frame here to 148. So let's hear that without oscillator one. So you can hear it's sort of halfway between a saw and a square wave. Uh, let's lower phase randomization to zero. Let's lower this two octaves. Let's hear it in the same range as the original. That's more like it. Now let's put on this low pass filter. I'm gonna set this to 25%. Um, this is a really nice handy tool since I can't use the filters. If I put this through the filters, it's automatically gonna go through the effects in Vital. Not the case for every synthesizer. But we have access to this, so I'm gonna cut out the high end with that. And now we should just have the first six harmonics. So now that I have that, I'm gonna keep the level as it is, and then I'm gonna turn on oscillator three. And this is just going to be a sine wave. So if I really want that fundamental, and I don't wanna boost any of these upper six harmonics here, the five harmonics above the fundamental, I can use this. So phase randomization to zero, down two octaves, lower the level, I'm gonna control that with macro four. So macro four will be called sub. Now, I also want even more control over that because I'm going to show you if I lower this, turn back on oscillator one. If I turn up my sub all the way, oh, it's still going through the effects. So now you can kind of hear what a difference that's making in the distortion. It's still not always the loudest thing. So if I wanted it to be, I would need to turn it up even more. By default, envelope one is controlling amplitude, but we can make it control amplitude even more by dragging it over to the level here. Then I can drag over macro four to that modulation amount. And I can even turn this up to one here. So now I need to turn this way down because we're gonna have a really loud sub if I turn this up. Now that sub is really loud, but we don't need that for this preset. I just set it to 0.1 but it's nice to have that option. And it's also gonna make it a lot louder. So what you could do is drag this over to the volume here, uh, the master volume, and set this to negative 0.2. So it's not changing your volume too much. Still getting louder, but not by as much. Um, so that's it for the macros. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's it for the rest of the sound. I, I don't think I'm missing anything. So there you have it, Cyberpunk Bass. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.